This week, in our message, we are going to be talking about one of the idols in our modern culture. But the truth is, this one has been around since the beginning of time. And as long as you're alive, it's still going to be around. You could say, wherever you are, this idol also is there. <laughs> Do you have any guesses about what I'm talking about? You're going to have to stick around to see if you're right. Well, what's up, Bible nerds? My name is Caitlin Caffrey, and today we're talking about idolatry. Now, before you leave thinking you don't need to listen to this episode because you can't remember the last time you bowed down to a statue or something like that, go ahead and pump the brakes because idolatry is allowing anything to take God's place in our hearts. It's putting something else before God in his place. And honestly, we do this all the time. Because the temptation to serve something or someone instead of God comes in a lot of subtle and sneaky ways. But none perhaps more sneaky than the strategy that our enemy, the devil, has been using from the very beginning. In Genesis 3, the devil tries to sell Eve a counterfeit decision. He tells her that if she disobeys God, her life will actually be better than what it already is. He says things to her like, hey, if you eat this fruit, your eyes will be opened. You will be like God. You will know good and evil. Did you catch the repeated word there? You, 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 you. Right. The idol that we're talking about today and in this story is the idol of self. Because here's the thing. Every day we make decisions, so many of them. And with each decision, we have the opportunity to serve ourselves and do what we think is best for us or serve God and trust his love for us. Like you get to choose what you're gonna post on social media. Maybe posting that one thing will get you more followers, but also it will be intentionally hurtful to someone else. So who are you gonna serve? Like you get to choose the friends that you invest in today. Maybe there's one crowd that always tells you what you wanna hear. Like even if you're being a punk and you know it. And there's another group that calls you out and reminds you that you represent Jesus wherever you go. But you wanna stick with that first group because it feels better in the moment. But you have to ask yourself the question, who do you want to serve? Here's the thing. The idol of self may get you what you want now. Like it may get you the followers. It may get you the ego stroke. Like it will get you self gratification, but it will cost you what you actually want most. I'm gonna read from Genesis three. This is verse 14. It says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel." See, Adam and Eve chose to put themselves in God's place and they ended up not satisfied, but covered in shame. They didn't end up fulfilled, they ended up fearful. As a result of this sin, a curse is unleashed on the world. And Adam and Eve's decision cost them what they really wanted most. Their all access pass to walking with God in the Garden of Eden. This story is a tragedy. But in the midst of this, we find the very first prophecy about a redeemer, a snake crushing savior who would come and overcome the devil's strategies and teach us how to do the same thing. How did Jesus, that snake crushing savior, who was straight up God in human form, resist the idol of self? Well, let's look at what he says. This is Mark 10, 45. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. See, Jesus didn't get tripped up by the lie that says to be happy or fulfilled, he had to do what was best for him. No, at every turn, Jesus chose to obey his father and do what was best for others. And I am so thankful that he did. Because if Jesus had chosen self-service instead of self-sacrifice, man, you and I would be without hope today. 
But thank God, because Jesus chose self-sacrifice. He chose to serve God. He chose us. This is what Philippians 2, starting in verse 5, says. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Even though Jesus was God in the flesh, he didn't walk around demanding that people serve him. Instead, he served people. He humbled himself and obeyed his father, even though that meant he would have to suffer and die. Jesus was not about serving himself. He was all about serving us sacrificially. So what are we supposed to do? Well, we're going to tear down the idol of self by following Jesus and serving others. Like, did you catch the beginning of that verse? It said, in our relationships with each other. We're called to think about them the same way Jesus thought about us. And he wasn't thinking about what felt best to him when he went to the cross. No, he started with his love for his father. That was expressed in his obedience. And the result was the most extravagant act of self-giving love the world has ever seen. So for us, we're going to follow Jesus' example of obedience to God and love for others, even when it's hard and it costs us. Because I can promise you that following Jesus will cost you. Like there's no getting around the self-sacrifice that is clearly part of doing things the Jesus way. It will cost you now, but it will lead you to what you want most. So this week, my challenge for you is to look for one opportunity to pick self-sacrifice instead of self-service and serve somebody else. And I would love to hear about what it is you decided to do. So make sure you come back to this video and tell me in the comments below how you served someone this week. And make sure you're right here on Wednesday for our message series, Tear Down the Idols, where you can hear more about how to tear down the idol of self. Until then, my friends, keep on reading your Bibles and stay nerdy.